Bonsoir. Bonsoir, bienvenue à la Grande Auberge. Tonight, I mean, we're celebrating um, the release of the book, but also uh, the, the, the collaborative spirit, you know, um, and, and some of the early visionaries who played with celluloid and using it to tell disturbing or absurd stories or creating magic. I think it's just a celebration of completing the book and having it out there. And it's been very rare that Josh and Black Francis and I have been together. It's mostly done by Skype or email. And so it's a great opportunity to kind of celebrate together, you know. So in the spirit of the book and of the fact that a screenwriter and biographer, a musician and an illustrator came together to create something new and different, we're showing two um, very special movies tonight. Bunuel and uh, Dali, a filmmaker and a surrealist, came together to make a very strange film. And A Trip to the Moon, which was one of the great first experiments in uh, French cinema and the melding of uh, the magic of film. Thank you so much for coming tonight, and we really are just so proud to share this evening with you. I was trying to make a record with my band and they hadn't made a record in a long time and there was one reticent member. We said, well, we'll just, we'll lose some songs quietly at a little studio demos, you know. And, uh, there's a film festival in San Francisco that every year asks, uh, rock musicians usually, right. to do uh, a score to an old silent film. And I had done one around this time, and I discovered by having a unifying uh, subject, the film that I was looking at, uh, I was able to write quickly. And so I was thinking about film. I uh, sort of asked myself the question, uh, when was the first pornographic film made? So as I began to look into it, there was, I found out there was a film called La Bonne Auberge, and um, La Bonne Auberge is the good inn, and uh, it had a narrative. There was a guy dressed up like a soldier, and he was the male actor in the film. And then there was a, a woman who has sex with a man. She was the daughter of the innkeeper. And the innkeeper was an old man, of course, who owned an inn. And this is where this story happens. The Good Inn is about a soldier who uh, suffers through a terrible tragedy on, um, on a ship. There's a historical event down in Toulon, France at that time where a dry docked ship blew up. Anyway, that was enough for me. I was like, okay, that's where Soldier Boy comes from. He was, in, he was there at that explosion. And um, that's how we ended up at the Good Inn. The ship is, blows up and he's then sort of thrown into a parallel universe or perhaps he's shell-shocked or maybe he's dead. And it's then his journey through the book. And as time gets kind of messed up, he meets Dali and Bunuel and people like that in Paris. So it's a kind of mixture of science fiction, history, real events and made up stuff. It's about uh, art and uh, sort of the struggle to create and collaborate. Uh, on a deeper level, The Good Inn is a meditation on the, the world of being a, an artist trying to do something different. I ran into Josh at a gig uh, uh, and um, in Texas where he was living at the time and uh, he was telling me about what he was up to and uh, uh, things he was writing you know uh, some of them were book related some of them were uh, screenplay related and he was asking what I was up to and I said I had been doing this or that or the other and you know, I wrote a bunch of songs about some 
movie idea, but really it wasn't a movie. I was just trying to like write songs quickly and get people uh, into a recording studio to make some music. And um, he said, oh, wait, 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 hold on, back up. What's this about a movie, you know? Black Francis told me this idea he had and uh, that he had written some songs, you know, about that idea. Well, me being a biographer and a writer of plays and screenplays, I immediately started sort of getting some ideas on, you know, I thought, you know, I could, I, I could help. He and Josh Frank got in touch with me really early on when they didn't have more than four or five pages of synopsis and asked me to do some drawings to help them kind of see it as a film, which is how they were thinking of it to start with. So we began to include <laughs> some, some drawings that Stephen had done. It was difficult to know what style to use because I'm known as a cartoonist so my work isn't very real in many ways. So I had to kind of find a way of drawing the real historical places such as Paris in the 20s and 30s and also be able to go on my own tangents, you know, and add some of my ideas. So I ended up with about three or four different styles. Some are more realistic, some are not. I didn't want to kind of uh, stultify the reader's imagination by just drawing scenes from the book, but I had to do that a bit to kind of tie the drawings in. The beauty of it is like one thing that, that Black Francis said is like don't have him get too photorealistic or whatever, because part of the beauty of Steve Appleby's work is that he could just draw a line and put a word next to it, and it's done. Like, the idea is perfect. But at the same time, he so amazingly really pushed his limits and came up with something completely new and original. And I think uh, because of the drawings, I began to fall in love with the characters that we had started yeah. to create. And, and, and you know, because they, they, they were, suddenly there was this emotional component. And, oh, that's what Soldier Boy looks like. And oh, that's what, that's what she looks like. And that's what the innkeeper looks like. And anyway, it just kind of got elevated. And then now here we are. Uh, there's this uh, illustrated uh, uh, novel or uh, a graphic novel or whatever the correct uh, terminology is to, to describe this.